Um, hello, my name is Richard Kemp. I've come to talk to you today about the importance of teamwork. Um, I know that uh, we're thinking about the academic environment, uh, but teamwork is also um, something that can help you in the academic environment and is essential for, um, if you like, the work environment, your future career. Um, the key to high performance teamwork, um, collaborative, co-creative teamwork, um, is to have teams that are um, based around cognitive diversity. Um, by cognitive diversity, we mean uh, the way in which people think. And what I want to do is give you an example of how to think about setting up a team that is cognitively diverse. Um, cognitive diversity is actually all around us. Um, each of us thinks in many different ways. Um, we're not at all alike. Um, we are different from each other. We think differently. The key to a team that is going to be successful is to understand that and harness it. And what I want to do is um, give you a very simple example of how to make um, a cognitively diverse team um, uh, that will be successful. Um, I'm thinking here of a team of three people. This is a, an approach that I use uh, when setting up um, entrepreneurial teams. Uh, you want a team of three to keep the team small, to keep it, um, if you like, lean, um, not overburdened, um, not requiring too much resource but you want to have um, a minimum amount of diversity um, to make the, um, that, that team really successful. Um, I hope that um, members of the audience can actually um, put a, uh, uh, a mic on and, and respond. Is that possible? Is it possible for people to... Um, unmute and um, reply to a question I'm going to ask. Ah, oh, it's a one way, okay. Um, so, right. Um, so what I'm going to do, I, I, I had hoped to make this very interactive um, and to have members of the audience, um, if you like, tell me their experience. But what I will do is um, I will give examples of um, how um, this experience works. So if you think about, uh, you want a team that is going to be diverse. One of the ways, the simplest ways to do that is to say, um, where is someone in their family? What experience have, had, have they had growing up? If you think about it, we have an eldest child experience, we have a middle child experience, we have a youngest child experience, and we have an only child experience. I'm going to focus here on the eldest, middle, and youngest, because in Oman, it's rare to have um, an only child. In the West, that's quite, quite common. Um, if I want to put a team together, let's say an entrepreneurial team, one of the quickest ways for me to do that if we're under time pressure is to find um, an eldest child, a middle child and a youngest child and put them together to form a team of three because they're gonna have complementary skills. Um, and I'll explain how this works. If you think about the eldest child experience, most eldest children will sell you that they have a role put upon them. They have a lot of responsibility. They stand in the place of the parent. Um, they support the parent. Um, they have, if you like, delegated responsibility from the parent. Um, they feel very responsible for um, helping their younger brothers and sisters um, to do the right thing. And for that eldest child, doing the right thing is really about doing what they do. They're very good at telling their brothers and sisters how they should act, um, what they 
how they should think, how they should behave, what the standards are, um, what they should be trying to achieve, because the eldest child says, I've had all that experience breaking the way. I've done all of this, um, uh, in, if you like, on my own account, and I'm able to share that experience with my younger brothers and sisters. So there's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of um, telling because the experience is I've had to learn how to do things um, for myself and I can share with you what I've learned. The oldest child is also often a driven person. Um, if you think about it, at one point, the eldest child was the only child. And then another child came along, a younger brother or sister, um, and their world changed. When you're little, you think that you're responsible for everything that happens in the world. You can't separate yourself from, um, if you like, the world and yourself. So when the world changes, when you stop being the centre of attention for your parents, um, psychologically, you think that you must be at fault. You've done something wrong that's changed, if you like, the world around you. It's changed the way things work. So eldest children typically will tell you that they are very driven. Um, they're rarely satisfied with their achievements. They're always looking to drive the next achievement. They're always setting really high standards and they expect the high standards that they set for themselves to be the standards that other people um, should um, aim for. Um, because the, the view is, if I demand this of myself, I can demand it of other people. So if you think about that experience of life, you have a leadership profile. Um, you have someone who is very driven, very responsible, um, um, sets milestones, um, expects to achieve, um, actually drives achievement, um, and is really good at kind of telling others um, what the plan is. Um, in the past, that used to be the model of leadership in the production economy of 3.0. So that's the um, industrial revolution when we were making things and we were scaling things. Having that kind of profile was um, very uh, typical for successful production outfits. Um, we've now moved on a little bit, um, so it's not the only model of leadership that we have. Um, I'm now gonna talk about the middle child experience and what that brings to a team. Uh, the middle child is frequently someone who says, I'm an ambassador, I'm a peacemaker, um, I connect my elder uh, brothers and sisters with my younger brothers and sisters um, I have something of the profile of the eldest child because I'm standing there responsible and helpful to my younger brothers and sisters. But at the same time, I'm um, communicating upwards to my el older brothers and sisters in ways that say, you need to understand um, the range of complexity um, that, that is in the family, if you like, that is, that is among us. So typically, middle children are very good communicators. And again, if you think about Oman, where you have large families, um, you can recognize that Omanis are very good, typically are very good communicators. Uh, <coughs> the research says that you need this kind of communic communicative capability for a team to succeed. And it's interesting, in the West, we all discovered emotional intelligence as um, something that business schools were teaching when middle children went extinct. There are very few middle children in the West anymore. Um, we typically have one child or two children. So uh, we have an oldest and a youngest. Um, we don't have a middle child. Um, in this middle child experience, um, the communicative ability, this ability to empathize and feel what others are feeling 
comes naturally. It's a it's a product um, of your um, childhood environment. So the research says you absolutely need this kind of communicative, empathic ability um, if a team is to succeed. The research also says um, that if you have what is um, I'm going to call a war maker, um, the team will fail. And a war maker is a middle child who feels that they are invisible, feels that um, they are unnoticed, and they make trouble. Um, they stir things up. Um, they're very good at um, setting gossip, um, setting, uh, if you like, rumors, um, really creating trouble. Um, if you're in a team where you have someone that is doing that, you have to tell them to stop or to leave the team because if they continue what they're doing, the team will fail. Um, so that middle child experience, this communicative experience, I think describes um, economy 4.0, which is the um, internet economy, if you like. It's the economy that was based on communication. And if you think about the youngest child experience, um, you have yet another profile. Um, the youngest child is often um, a child or a person um, that has a lot that is a lot that is given to them through their life. Um, they have a lot of love given to them. They have a lot of resources given to them. Um, so that they expect the world to provide for them. Um, they tend not to worry too much about where something going to come from because their life experience is people give them a great deal of help, a great deal of love, a great deal of support. They also have a great range, um, if you like, of examples from their older brothers and sisters. So typically, um, youngest child, youngest children um, are good at learning from others. They're good at assessing risk. Um, they're more confident around risk taking um, maybe than their um, elder brothers and sisters because they've learned from their elder brothers and sisters mistakes. Um, they're good at seeing what works and what doesn't work. And they're usually very good at charting their own course, choosing their own way um, in a way that is completely independent. Interestingly, they also um, know that their eldest brother or sister um, is going to be driven. They're going to um, really work hard to um, achieve and set achievement. They know that their middle brothers and sisters are going to communicate and sort problems out and do a great deal of, um, if you like, support work. So typically, they just sit and allow things to happen. And I want you to think about this as maybe the kind of California um, high tech uh, Silicon Valley um, style of leadership. The world will provide. We don't have to do too much. We just have to kind of organize, um, orchestrate and let people let people find their own way because they will find it anyway. If you think about those three different profiles and you think about them in a team, um, you have a team that is naturally resilient because you will have one member of the team that is very concerned with achievement, with pace, with goals, with KPIs. You will have one member of the team that is very good at communicating, um, very good at um, bringing people together, um, really building this kind of empathic, supportive environment. And you will have one person that is good at risk taking, um, that is um, able to go out and, for example, talk to investors about why um, you should get investment or to look at the risk environment um, and to read that environment in a way that is perhaps more holistic um, than their, um, the other two profiles. 
what I hope I've shown you there is that all of us carry this cognitive diversity in us. Um, I've talked to you in a very general way, a very shallow way about these three life experiences. But if you recognize them, you can see that you have the basis for um, both a leadership um, profile um, and um, an ability to bring something specific to a team because it's been your experience of life. It's embedded in you. Um, there are many other examples of um, this cognitive diversity. It shows in the kind of games that people like to play, the activities that they do. Um, it shows in whether they are impatient, uh, whether they're optimistic or pessimistic, whether their biorhythms are in the morning or the evening. Um, there's a very large spread um, of <coughs> behaviors, of ways of being that when you understand them, um, you can use to make your team uh, both strong um, and um, supportive. I'm gonna finish by saying, if you're thinking about your academic career, we've, we've had a lot about um, universities are going to become more hybrid and so on. Um, I'm gonna suggest that as you think about your academic program, whatever it is that you're going to go and do, think very hard about where you want to be. Think about the faculty. Think about creating uh, a learning team so that you're um, taking a, a, a control of a part of this uh, experience. Use the faculty, use their networks to really go out and engage with um, the domain area that's of interest to you. Um, maybe set up a team to say, can we be um, an entrepreneurial team? Can we set up a company? Can we do something that um, is new? Can we actually create our own employment um, if we do this well? Um, and if we use the resources of the university, uh, and I'm thinking here really about the personal relationships of the faculty, so that you're getting recommended um, where to look in the outside world, where innovation is happening, where the cutting edge of whatever it is that you're interested in is going on, taking place. The more you activate yourself and your environment, your relationships with um, the university resources, particularly the faculty, the more successful you'll be. And I'm really going to suggest that you um, think hard about creating a learning team, maybe a team of three or five, where you say the aim of this team is to help us learn to learn. Uh, we're going to share our learning with each other. You don't have to be studying this same subject for that to work, because the approach to learning is not about the subject. It's about a way of thinking and applying what you're learning, um, if you like, for immediate benefit. Um, so you're learning not to pass exams, but you're learning to apply how you're thinking, what you now know um, in the real world. Um, so um, you're thinking about how do I take my university learning and turn it into something that is professionally advantageous. Um, I'm going to stop there because um, we're at time. Um, if there are any questions, please let me know.